17, about 17 countries that were in attendance and they all agreed. So that's how it became International um, Women's Day. But however, this was not adopted in many countries, including the United States until 1975, when the United Nations began to sponsor it. So then from there, in 1975, a task force in California created Women's History Week. And they did that to persuade the school principals to follow the Title IX federal civil rights law. And so what that civil rights law was, was um, it banned gender discrimination within education. So it's crazy to think that they had to create a whole task force for a week just to persuade um, school principals to follow that, that law. But um, here we are. And so after it being widely celebrated by many states in March of 1980, even though it was only specifically for California, so President Jimmy Carter declared that March 8th would be the start of Women's History Week. And then a few years later in 1987, Congress just declared the entire month of March as Women's History Month. And that is how we got here. And so just a few statistics within um, the architecture field. So out of 116,000 licensed architects in the United States, 17% of us, 17% um, of that number represents women. So it is kind of low, it's actually very low. But um, so moving on, so on average, it generally takes an individual 12 to 12.6 years to complete all of their ARE exams and AXP um, hours in order to earn their initial licensure. For women, it takes 11.8 years. So it's a little bit below average. And then out of all of the ARE completions, women make up 38% of that. And then out of all of the AXP hours completions, women make up 40%. Um, so yeah, so we also just wanted to highlight some amazing women architects that have made their mark in the architectural profession. Um, the first one is um, Louis, uh, Louise Bethan. She was the first woman to work as a professional architect in the U.S. Um, and she was followed years later um, by Norma Merrick. She was the first Black woman to become a licensed architect in the U.S. Um, but between um, Norma and Louise was Marion Manley. She was the first woman to be licensed architect in South Florida. Um, and then within the AIA um, organization, the first woman elected to be president was Susan Maxman in 1992. Um, and then that was followed by um, Dennis Hunt. She was the first black woman elected as a US, uh, AIA local chapter president, and that was in Seattle. Um, and then in the international like spectrum of our profession, the first woman to receive a Pritzker Prize was Zaha Hadid. And we, the last person we wanted to spotlight was Jillian Morgan. She was the first woman to receive an AIA gold, gold medal. Um, and these are just a few of the amazing um, accomplished architects that broke barriers for women in the profession. Um, and that's why we wanted to host this event was to provide a space for us students um, to connect to you, the licensed women architects already practicing so that we can learn from each other and get advice on how to navigate um, the gender disparities within these fields um, and to just um, come together in order to help us um, make your strong connections and continue in the, in the, in the footsteps of these amazing women. Um, so I just wanna invite all the, men, the, the mentors to kind of introduce themselves and just explain why you chose architecture and what gravitated you towards to be an architect. There's no order. Anyone can just kind of speak up and, and introduce themselves. All right, I'll start just because I'm, did everybody hear me? I'm the chair of the Women in Architecture Committee, so I'll just, you know, take it from there. Uh, my name is Lourdes Solera, and I'm uh, a principal at MC Harry and Associates, and I have been a practicing architect for 30 plus years. I uh, went to Mississippi State University, so I'm not a local um, product of architecture school. And I always wanted to be an architect. My grandfather was an architect. My uncle was an architect. I have three siblings who were engineers and therefore I did not want to be an engineer because I'm the youngest and I always had to do things different. And uh, I loved it. I've always loved it. And uh, I still do 30 plus years later. Elizabeth, maybe you go. Oh, I lost Elizabeth. I yeah, here. no, I'll go next. Uh, hi, everybody. My name is Elizabeth Camargo. I co-chair the Women in Architecture Committee with Lourdes. 
Um, I'm the principal of an architecture firm in Miami Beach, you see architecture and design. Um, I wanted to be an architect when I was a little girl, I think maybe about 10 years old. My, my father used to draw very well, not architectural drawings, but just drawings. And I found once his um, rendering book and I thought it was so cool and I got very impressed and I asked my mom, what do I need to study to be, to be able to do these drawings? And she said, well, you have two options. You can go to art school or to architecture school, but probably you can make a better living going to architecture school. So at that point, I decided what I was going to, what I was going to do in life. So here I am, 30 plus years later of professional experience, not counting, studying, and um, I wouldn't go back. Um, so I'll call now, how about Pat, please? Oh, hi, thank you for having me. Um, I'm Pat Bosch. I am um, a co-founder of the uh, Perkins and Will um, Miami uh, studio. Uh, I was, um, uh, I am the design director of the Miami studio uh, and, uh, and also part of the corporate uh, design board, design leadership. Um, I did not want to be an architect. Um, I actually, uh, actually somebody maybe should mute or, or something. <laughs> There's like this background noise, I'm not sure. Um, and, uh, uh, I did not want to be an architect. Actually, I wanted to be a civil rights lawyer. I wanted to defend, uh, people's rights and injustice. Um, and, uh, but my mother, uh, was an architect. Uh, my father was an architect and, um, they basically said, if you want to transform people's lives, if you want to make it better, Actually, architecture is a great vehicle to do that. So um, I was uh, uh, sort of inspired to, to become an architect and, and, and actually have uh, found that platform and that, um, I would say, journey at Perkins and Will to really sort of uh, be in a position of relevance and of, um, and, and of importance uh, to bring solutions to our societies and to communities and actually transform people's lives and and at the end of the day it was i think almost full circle um the voice i have found as a designer has been a very militant one and a very sort of um rebellious one and um i take full stock of that uh as a person who has um uh sort of discovered that this uh profession has given me a powerful voice to to make commentaries on society on politics on equity on diversity um and 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 so it's 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 been empowering and it's actually been a joy to take that journey in this side of the equation of our profession and i call elena my <laughs> my colleague <laughs> Who, who dragged me into this today. <laughs> yes, hello everybody. And um, it's a pleasure to be spending uh, today with you. Um, my name is Elina Cardet, and I joined the Perkins and Will Miami studio. It's gonna be almost six years now. Um, I, a little bit of history, my dad is an engineer, the, in my mind, the best engineer in the world. And my dad, my mom is a psychologist. Um, I started thinking about architecture really early on. I, I think most of you, um, and it was a way to combine my passion for science and my passion for art. And it was having amazing mentors that showed me the path of architecture as that platform where you can be, have a life of the mind, still be a maker, be creative and help people's lives. And so I have found architecture in its very wide platform um an incredible venue for me to to develop a career and i'm very grateful and um i'm in the uh, women in architecture committee i believe that uh we must support each other there's a lot of history that needs to be rewritten in terms of women in the profession and that we need to help each other um and so we're here for you hello everybody 
My name is Sarah Jimenez. I am, I'm, I've been in architecture for 25 years. Um, I'm originally from Mexico. So when I was living in Mexico, my mom is a nurse and I never thought of going to architecture my first, probably when I was in, in high school. But <clears throat> one day I caught myself, I ended up in the ER and I fainted when I saw blood. So I said, I don't think medicine is for me. So <laughs> I decided, I just decided I wanted to do architecture. I didn't know anything about it. And it's, I think the first year that I, that I went to architecture school in Mexico, I found how the passion, I, I found the passion for architecture and I found the passion for putting things together and, and, and have a lasting effect in society and the lives of, of, of a lot of people. And <clears throat> come forward, I came to Miami and I started working. I, I took a kind of a different path. Um, I put my, my name, I started registration for, for to go to my master program in FIU in architecture. And I missed the deadline for the portfolio. And back then it was taking once a year. And I said, I am not gonna wait another year. I was a newlywed living in Miami and not much to do. So I decided to go to construction management. So <clears throat> I did my master in construction management. I started working at uh, Spilis Candela and Partners back then. I've been with AECOM uh, for 16 years. I started doing construction administration, love putting things together, love the technical part of architecture. And now I am, I am the uh, operations manager for uh, business and places in, in the office in Miami. I guess I'll go next. Um, hi everybody, my name is Nadine St. Louis. I am a licensed architect. Um, currently I work for Guri Matute as a project architect. Um, my passion for architecture started at a young age, um, but I didn't know what, it, what architecture was. Um, funny, funny thing is that my father is an engineer, so living in New York, which is where I'm originally from, and going into Manhattan, you look at these buildings and they fascinated me, but my idea of buildings back then, because I didn't know what architecture was, was all about engineering. So I was in love with the idea of buildings and space and creating, but in my mind, it was all about engineering. I learned very quickly once I got into Polytech University and engineering school that I was extremely bored with the one answer of engineering and the lack of creative creativity that I needed for engineering. So then my path was architecture. So that's how I kind of fell into architecture. I was in love with all aspects of it before I knew what it actually was. Um, but all that aside, um, I'm originally from New York. I have my license in New York. My license is coming now in Florida after my reciprocity and filling out all the paperwork. Um, I'm also the NOMA South Florida Vice President. Um, and I'm excited about that role and bringing awareness about um, African-American minority architecture to the masses and letting people know that we're here and we're few, but we're, we're many and we're strong. Um, I'm also the chair for the Diversity and Inclusion Committee newly formed in Miami. So again, championing that effort, championing that effort and bringing that to young women has always been a passion of mine. So my whole philosophy is you can see it, you can be it. So I'm here to be seen for young minority architects so that you can understand that this is a path for you, a path for women in general, and to empower younger architects to be better than I could ever be. I want to see your designs and I want to see your buildings and I want to, I want to say, wow, that looks absolutely amazing because I believe you're the future. You're doing what, what we need to do and I'm here for you. So can I go next? This is Nadi. Can you hear me? Yes. So good morning. Uh, my name is Nadi Soto. I'm an architect in Coral Gables. Um, I've been uh, very dedicated to the women in architecture movement ever since this lady, Lourdes Solera, came back from a women's leadership summit and said, oh, we have to do this. Um, so it's been, it's going to be 11 years this year, and I'm really excited about that. And I, I'm I'm really enthused that 
at hearing uh, the amount of um, people on, on this call. Um, a little bit about me. I'm president of a, of a boutique-sized firm in Coral Gables, Ferguson, Glasgow, Schuster, Soto, which is a lot of names, um, but it's a, it's a firm that's been around for um, a lot of years, since 19, 1955. Um, I went to the University of Miami, and the reason I did that is because I wanted to be an artist. And when I had a conversation with my dad about, I'm gonna be an artist, I'm gonna be very famous, he says, well, what did you think of something that you can fall back on in case that doesn't work out? Uh, so that's how my, you know, from that I went to the high school counselor and they suggested, oh, how about trying architecture? You're good at math and, and your art is beautiful, this and that, try that. And it was the best advice I ever got. I've never regretted it. I love, I love um, the profession. I love the, the design aspect of it. I love the management. I love clients and talking to them. Um, and my, my one piece of advice today to everybody is, is to please focus on it because it's a beautiful career and also to get your license as soon as you can in your life when you get, uh, when you, when you're leaving school or if you're starting it when you're in school, because, um, all the brain cells start to go as, uh, your life progresses. And if you get married and have children and all that stuff, um, life is very complicated. Uh, so try to get that out of the way as soon as you can, and you're never going to regret that as well. Uh, so I am really happy to participate and please reach out to me for anything that anybody wants at any time. I'm here for you. I think, next? I think, okay, go ahead. No, you can go ahead. No, you're there. <laughs> okay. Hi, everyone. Amanda Rosenfeld. I am an architect and designer at HKS Architects uh, here in Coral Gables. I am also one of the vice presidents for AIA Miami, as well as the chair uh, for the a ARE, YAF, and Mentorship Committee. Uh, I had a similar path to Alina where I didn't know what I wanted to be. I actually wanted to be a veterinarian when I was really young. And like Sarah, I could not handle blood. Um, so my parents, who are both lawyers and knew I didn't want to be going into law, uh, said, you're good at art, you're good at science and math, why don't you look at architecture? And I was like, no, no. If I'm not going to do vet, I'll be an artist. And we looked at it. I took a class at UM uh, during my high school years, and I never looked back. I graduated UM in 2013 and been an architect at HKS ever since. So, sorry, I just want to clarify. So I always wanted to be an architect. I think I was like 10, 10 or 12, something like that when I started. So I just, if it sounded the other way, yeah. I apologize. No, I must have mixed Sarah and myself and Alina and everybody up. <laughs> I think I'll, I'll go next. Um, my name is uh, Liora and uh, I I'm uh, the managing director of OBMI, where a boutique practice focusing on hospitality with a, a global practice. And um, I come from Chile. I think uh, my father was an interior designer working from home, so I spent a lot of hours in his office, which was our garage, uh, with pens and in those days, ink pens and so it sort of was natural to go into architecture school. I'm also very good at math. So um, it seemed like a good fit. And I, I love um, to understand larger problems in society too. So I derived into urban design. I worked a lot as an urban designer. I co-founded a firm in Chile where I worked for many years. I was the one woman uh, in a partnership of uh, at some point five, then four. Um, I don't think I've ever had a woman client in my long life, maybe only one, but that's an inherited business, so it looks somehow different. And then at some point I moved to the U.S. here, started working at OBMI, and um, worked my way to become managing director. I love managing too. I love design, but at some point throughout my career, my interests changed from 
the detail of the architecture to really making sure that architects can do what they can do, that they do it right, that they make the money they need to make and that things are done on time and that everything goes in, in the right direction. And I really love it. And um, so there's many paths in the architecture field too, and they're also going to change throughout everybody's life. You start in one place and you change and your interests change and the environment changes. Um, so it's, 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 it's been a good and amazing experience. And uh, I've always found myself, um, um, I would say being at the forefront as a, as a woman, being the first board of director on the board of OBMI, being an only woman in a Chilean company, uh, being a managing director here, in other activities, I've never been afraid to just go and do what needs to be done. And, and that's been my attitude always. Don't, don't try to say you are this or somebody said, or I, I, I don't look at all of that. I just do what needs to be done and that moves you forward and behind it opens the path and a lot of younger women that I've worked with have uh, told me you know that it's good to see that because then they can just forge ahead they know that if they do right they're good and strong professionals the path will open okay has all the architects gotten a chance to go I believe so. Okay, well, thank you all for sharing. Um, we are gonna go ahead into our next question, which gets a little bit more um, in detail. So this question goes out to all of the architect mentors and you can answer in any order. So having gone through years of schooling, licensing, and now practicing at various firms um, across Florida, as a woman, what has been your biggest challenge when navigating this profession? Um, I'll start that off. Um, I think the biggest challenge is understanding your voice and making sure that you're heard. Um, it's okay to have an opinion on things. It's okay to have a design idea and it's okay to speak up at the table. Um, I think getting over that initial hump would be one of the more difficult challenges. Um, many times I'm the youngest person in the room and that has not stopped me then and it won't stop me now. Um, I have no problem letting you know if I like that idea or, or what my ideas are to help or improve a design or even color choices, things of that nature. So definitely um, speak up, make yourself heard respectfully and don't be afraid to have an idea or share your idea wherever you are. I'm going to follow Nadine and I'm going to say the biggest challenge is turning that little voice in our head that says we don't know what we're doing. Uh, somebody else knows more. And uh, there's plenty of, of research that shows men, women always underestimate their capacities and capabilities and men overestimate what they can do. So I think that's always been my biggest challenge to turn off that little voice and just ignore it and just just do it you know, to, I think Leora put it right, you know, just do what needs to be done and, and you'll find a way. And if you don't know, you'll learn, you know, you'll ask somebody, so. Um, I'll follow on that. So <clears throat> I didn't mention, but I am originally from Brazil and I went to architecture school there. So my class was 50-50 uh, and we had a tradition. I mean, that we were, the architecture school was seen as the school where mainly women and the gay guys would go. That's how we were seen there. So when I moved here, I was, um, gender discrimination was, ne was never something that was in the forefront for me because I came from a background that everybody was pretty much the same and treated the same. So I think that in a way helped me to push my way ahead because I never put myself in a position that, oh, women are discriminated and I am discriminated against, so I'll be, I'll set behind. So I, because my, my frame of mind has never been like that, I thought that helped me a lot moving forward. And I think one of the biggest lessons I learned is that um, we should not be afraid of making mistakes. Everybody makes mistakes. And I think we being women and always finding the need to prove ourselves more we sometimes omit ourselves from the conversation because we're afraid of making a mistake. 
but everybody makes mistakes and you can correct your mistakes if you're humble and acknowledge that. Um, yeah, so that's was the only thing I would like to add that. And one more thing, I think, um, because women are usually seen as less capable, less knowledgeable, uh, if you know what you're talking about and you can show that you really know and you, uh, uh, you um, um, have the, the knowledge and can back up your the information you're saying, that does help in gaining the respect from the man around you. I will say that um, biggest challenge the navigating the profession. Uh, I, I don't think it's a woman thing. The biggest challenge. I think it's just what's your biggest challenge. The only thing as a woman I would say is really uh, raising your kids. That's a very tough time because of the deadlines and the late nights. And uh, we just have to take charge of it and making sure that we have what the support we need. And I made sure I never had an excuse to use my children, never to use my children as an excuse. And, uh, uh, and not as an excuse, I just made sure I had a support network that I needed, whatever it takes, with your husband, with your mother, with hiring somebody, and so that you can go ahead and do what you need to do. Today, uh, I am sure it's more shared with your husbands, if you have a husband, or your partner, um, I see in, in, in my office, I see men taking the, the liberty to say I cannot come today because I have a meeting in school or I, it's parents, school, it's parents day in school. They say this with a lot of freedom. And I see more men saying that than women, actually, because I maybe women are still a little bit uh, careful about saying something like that. So I think we just have to watch that, ensure that uh, we take the same liberty if needed. I think I think I'm, I'm with Liora. Um, I I don't think this is an, an issue of being a woman or or a man. I think and but I I greatly agree with what uh, Lourdes said. Find your voice. And sometimes so sometimes especially when you're fresh out of school, when you're in a new job when you're in a new position where you're not, where you're not sure of what, of, of what you're doing there. <clears throat> and I think the, the, the biggest challenge is to learn to be sure. You have to be sure, you have to make sure, you have to be going to a position where you're saying, you know what, even if I'm sure that I don't know the answer, I'm sure of that. And it's, it's perfectly okay say, I don't know, but let me find out. And I think that's one of the biggest, the biggest lessons I learned doing for many years, the construction administration and dealing with, with, with people in construction that always challenge, challenge me as being a woman, being Latin, being young. And, and, <clears throat> and I thought that, 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 that showed a lot of respect when even when I said, you know what, I don't know, but I'll find out. Let me ask the engineer, let me go back and research, let me go and do this. But I, I think finding that voice and, and getting out of, of your, your own smoke and shadows, that, that helps a lot. Once you start getting and you're feeling assured that you know what you're doing, I think that's the most important part and that's where you can shine in your job. Um, and just one more thing um, on the young, on, for the, all the younger professionals, all the young architects that are coming out of school. I was recently listening to a, to a, um, a, a conference that was talking a, 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 about um, uh, inclusion and they were saying being young is also being inclusive. Let's, let's, lead, let's let them speak, let's lead, let, let them share that idea. So just because you're fresh of a school, because you're young, don't, don't shy, don't be shy, speak up, give our ideas because sometimes the best ideas come from the youngest people. So I think that's... <clears throat> yeah, and to, and to add to that, Sarah, um, not only having your voice, but also understanding that it's okay not to know something. Everybody doesn't know everything in the room and it doesn't matter how many years of experience any architect has, you're always learning. You're always figuring something else out. You're all, no one person knows everything. 
So when you bring that idea to the table, it may be a new view or a new way of looking at it that you bring into. So have that voice, be that strength and have that confidence inside yourself to understand that you don't know, but there's a good, there's a good chance they don't know either. So you can figure it out together. It doesn't matter how young you are. It doesn't matter if you're fresh out of school, if you don't know how to eat you have a voice and you have an opinion and you have a thought. And the best thing about it is that since you're graduating now, you have new ideas and new thoughts and new ways of looking at things. The people who are older, they have the ideas, but they're at a, at a different level of schooling than you are now. So you bring something to the table that they never had before. So own that strength, own that knowledge and know that you come with it and you have the power to say something. So don't be afraid to speak respectfully always. Don't be afraid to speak. And it's okay not to know and to figure it out with someone else. Um, Nadine, that's I think right. that's, a, that's a very compelling um, comment. I would say, um, as an older voice, <laughs> I, I do want to believe that, um, I mean, we as a profession, as professionals need to always be um, uh, on the no. I mean, you should never feel that you're an old voice or a new voice. I mean, we should always be um, in the new voice category, right? Um, uh, I, and, and I agree that there's a diversity of voices and that diversity brings me to the challenge that I think what I have battled the most um, in corporate America um, has been um, demystifying um, preconceptions and, and this challenge of, you know, not being, I refuse to be classified into a box or a niche um, and because I'm a woman or because I'm Hispanic or because I'm older or because I'm a designer. Um, I think that uh, people tend to niche people very quickly and unconscious bias is something fairly erosive. And I think that women, um, specifically in corporate America, when you're sort of dealing with sort of layers of growth um, and layers of voices, uh, you know, battling this, this, uh, this, this constant sort of wanting to put you in a box or in a niche and I think women are multitaskers. We're we're actually um, we're actually pretty uh, uh, equipped to be uh, uh, very strong and very robust about all the layers of this profession. Um, and no matter where we go, I mean, I've heard a lot of you say, you know, you like management, et cetera. And certainly, growing um, in corporate America as a, as a designer, uh, where I am the only, uh, woman design director, uh, was the first design director and, and, uh, of an office. Uh, it is pretty interesting because in a room full of men in the design board, for example, they are always talking and forgetting that I have a very different voice as a woman. So demystifying that is something that is a challenge. I think as a, as an advice, I would say, and Nadine, you kind of said it sort of there at the end. Um, I think carrying yourself with integrity, carrying yourself with the humbleness that you're always there to learn something, but carrying yourself with the power of your knowledge, um, that your deeds and your, and your experience and your work should speak for itself um, is something that is extremely powerful no matter the gender. Um, but I think that it is important that we break barriers. I mean, I think the challenge for me has been, I've always tried to sort of demystify these things about women are, you know, sort of more emotional or women are, um, you know, a little bit more fickle or, or they have challenges with kids or challenges with, with life. And I think, uh, Leora, you said it. I mean, I've always sort of been very, opaque, if you will, about that. Um, I don't necessarily uh, think that it's, um, it's, it's, it's pertinent to or relevant to uh, what we're doing. However, I carry it with honor that, you know, I started an office at 32 with a two-year-old. 
Um, so mm -hmm. it is important. And as a, and as a woman in corporate America that I had to sort of fight my way up into that ladder, um, uh, through my work and through the humbleness of my work. Right. Um, I didn't impose myself. I just, I just earned it. And I think that you just need to, um, carry yourself with that dignity, carry yourself with that self-assurance and that, um, integrity of your work. Um, and don't let anyone sort of put you in a box of, well, you may not be that good in this, or you may not be as strong doing this. Well, that's not for them to determine. Mm -hmm. um, and, and, and again, I mean, I think for the younger architects coming into, into the profession, um, I have found that the younger women in our firm, across the firm globally, um, that carry themselves with that integrity and that humbleness of I'm here to learn and I'm here to have a voice, but I'm here to learn um, are v and, and have a strong voice. Like Nadine was saying um, are, are the ones that are being able to carry themselves fairly successfully through the profession and, 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 and actually arming themselves with all of the right tools and all of the right experiences and all of the, uh, um, sort of the full spectrum of a, of a profession rather than niching themselves. And I don't think anybody should um, just be one dimensional. I think yeah. this profession is so varied that you need to be strong at all levels. Um, but certainly I think we will continue to battle. And I have to say, I don't know, Nati or, or, um, um, or Lourdes or, or Elizabeth, you know, our generation of, um, I don't know if you guys have felt the same thing, but I have felt that the more I have reached seniority in, in, in our, in our, in, in uh, corporate America, the more challenges are coming out of under the, the rocks. Um, it's actually, um, you know, even when I felt I had, I had blasted the glass ceiling in our firm and, and, and I did um, there's, there's always another one <laughs> that mm -hmm. seems to show up. Yeah. There are um, yeah. It is. So I just wanted to add very briefly, and I agree with um, all of my colleagues' comments, um, but just going back to the point of how to find that voice and to walk into the room with that confidence or that dignity, how to shore yourself up and increase the level of confidence. I think that focusing on increasing your knowledge base and your own level of competence while decreasing your need for external approval. Um, as Pat was saying, you will find terrors, you will help find people that sabotage your career, ignore them, just plow forward. Yeah. Um, and really as a personal challenge is that internal voice of, of seeking that external approval. Okay. So the more you decrease that and you focus on your work, Mm -hmm. and what you're doing and your interest and increasing that knowledge, the better that you will find. And the generational uh, opportunities that, um, that you guys have with having grown up with much more access to information, technology, um, that's an incredible advantage that can really exponentially catapult your growth. Um, so take advantage of that. Elena, you bring up a great point. Um, and to add to what you, surround yourself with the women you admire and mm -hmm. having that great core support i think is also mm -hmm. really important mm -hmm. like the women on this call we we all support each other and push each other forward understand who's around you who's making you grow who's helping you to learn um i always say any knowledge that i have i want to give it away Whatever little knowledge I've acquired, I want to give it away. I want to teach as, as much as I know I want to teach. If I learn a new trick or a new way of putting something together, I want to make sure I teach someone else. Um, so look for that, um, a good support system. Um, join um, groups such as, such as AIAS or AIA or NOMA or w, uh, WIA, Women in Architecture. Find that support system because architecture can be hard sometimes. As women, it could be difficult. You'll have those days where someone said something to you and you may have taken it personally or things of that nature, but having a good support system around you to support you, especially through your exams, I think is something that's incredibly important and helped me out a lot. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, well, thank you all for sharing. Thank you guys for the excellent advice and experiences. It truly has been really helpful. So we are going to move on into our first workshop, but before we do so, we would like to get to know the attendees and who are who is in this meeting. So if you all would just go around and just say your name, your school year, and where you're from, and then we can move out into our breakout rooms. Um, so I guess I will just call from the order of my screen. So Van Lee, or Van Lee, and if I mispronounce your name, I completely apologize, just please correct me. It's fine, it's uh, Van. Um, so I, I go to FIU and I'm studying architecture first. Um, and I'm in my sixth year of architecture to pursuing my master's. So this is my last year in university. And um, I was born in Nebraska, um, not from Miami, but my whole life has been Miami. Uh, the reason why is Nebraska is because my parents, um, after the Vietnam War, they, they reached for an asylum to go to Nebraska. And then from there, we moved to Miami. So that's a little bit about me. Welcome. Next on my screen is Alicia. Hi, it's Alyssa, but um, so currently I go to FIU and I'm in my third year in the March program. Um, yeah. Okay, <laughs> welcome. Um, Alicia Cohen. Uh, hi, I'm Alicia. Uh, I am a fourth year undergraduate student at the University of Miami, uh, originally from Orlando, Florida, so not too far. Um, and I have one more year of undergrad. <laughs> Welcome. Uh, Florianne? Hi, my name is Florianne. Um, I was originally born in Haiti, but I was mostly raised here in Miami. And I am currently in my um, fifth year of undergrad. And I also have one more year to go. I mean, my fourth year. I also have one more year to go. <laughs> Welcome. Afomia? And sorry, Florianne. And uh, which school are you in? I missed it. I'm um, at uh, UM. UM. Uh, hi, I am Nafomia. I am a third year um, student at the University of Miami. I am majoring in architecture and minoring in art. And I am originally from Ethiopia. Welcome. Uh, next on my screen is Amna. Hi everyone, my name is Amna Murshad. I was born and raised in Dubai. I moved to the United States in uh, 2012. Um, I come from two cultures which actually benefited me personally and professionally. I um, moved to Miami from Tampa and before that I was in uh, the central Orlando area in Titusville. Um, I have a bachelor's degree in interior design I graduated in 2016, worked for three years um, as a design assistant, moved up to junior designer, and then I decided to uh, pursue my master's in architecture. I'm in my second year in the FIU program, and um, my passion um, actually came to full circle. When I graduated high school, my first choice was architectural engineering in the United Arab Emirates, but then, um, Unfortunate events happened in my personal life, and uh, but I'm glad they happened. They, I've grown from them. I've learned a lot, and I'm very happy to pursue my passion in architecture and um, combine my experiences in interior design and um, see what the outcome will be when I graduate and um, be in the field. Thank you. Welcome. Next on my screen, Kanisha. Hi, my name is Kanisha. Um, I go to FIU and I'm a graduate student. This is my final year and I'm from St. Lucia. Welcome and last but not least, Nicole. Hi, my name is Nicole. I was born here in Miami and I'm currently in my fourth year um, at Florida International University and I graduate in a year from the graduate's program. And you have Bar okay. and there's Barbara as well. Barbara, yeah. Hi. Um, 
Hi, my name is Barbara Camellia. Um, I'm originally from Venezuela and I came here like three years ago um, to study. I go to FIU and I'm in my third year. I still have two more to go to get my master's. Yep. Okay, well, welcome and thank you all for joining. So now we're gonna move on to our first workshop, which is intended for portfolio, resume, um, feedback, just some quick tips. So we will move out into via breakout rooms. Um, it should be popping up on your screen momentarily. If um, there are any problems with the breakout rooms, uh, like if for some reason there are two mentors or no mentor, just come back out to the main room and we'll figure out what's going on with them. Uh, Colleen? It'll start Colleen. automatically. And then how long should I have them on? Um, this first one for 25 minutes. Okay, we will do. Colleen, could you yeah. please put your cell phone number on the chat just in case something goes wrong or people in the Zoom sure. thing have access to them? Thanks. Colleen, this will go automatically, right? But just a second. I had to put the time. And you said 25 minutes? Yes, thank you. 